Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sadath Hurricane Track here, Friday now, the 12th day of September 2025. The main topic today, you don't have to worry about hurricanes any time soon. The Atlantic Basin still all but shut down. We only have one active tropical cyclone out there that I'm aware of, and that's Marco off the coast of Mexico. I think that's about it. The Westpac also very, very quiet right now. Something really weird happening in the global circulation patterns. Story for another day. Let's let's take the quiet with everything else going on. This is certainly good news, and uh, it should hang on and be this way for the foreseeable future. So let's take a look at what we do have out there and discuss a few things. Now, we do have this one area. The Hurricane Center has outlined it over the next seven days as having about a 40% chance of further development. But notice that they do mention that dry and stable air will likely limit this system's development. And that has been the theme so far post Aaron is lots of dry, stable air sitting out here. The demise of 91L was a huge clue. And there you go. It seems to be holding on this uh, overall negative uh, thermodynamic profile. Not so in the Eastern Pacific. We do have Mario sitting out here uh, very weak. Wind-wise and pressure-wise, 1,006 millibars. Hugging the coast of Mexico over the next few days, it should move away from the coast of Mexico. Wouldn't surprise me if this becomes a hurricane briefly. It also wouldn't surprise me if this fails to do much at all and just kind of dies away. Stuff is in that much of a funk across the global tropics that I don't even know anymore sometimes, so we'll see. Good news is, though, once it does begin to move away down here, any rain and problems associated with that will begin to abate. So that's good news, too. Looking at everything on the satellite animation, there's Marco sitting there off the coast of Mexico. Gulf, nice and clear overall, as is the Caribbean. Upper level low spinning over here north and east of the islands. And then some frontal activity sitting out over the Atlantic. And, I mean, look, when you're not, not even focusing shower and thunderstorm activity off of a stalled front over 85 degree water in September, you know something's goofy. Something is happening that's making stuff not happen. It's pretty rare to see that uh, for sure. Sliding the animation over to the east more. Activity coming off Africa now. This is part of that 40% deal that should head out into the open Atlantic no matter what it does. Hey, you can clearly see the large area of high pressure in the atmosphere here, everything rotating around it. And then there's that frontal system. And I can show you all of that on the vorticity signature pretty clearly. All that energy stretched out over thousands of miles with nothing focusing on it to speak of. Again, that's really hard to believe. We've had some nasty hurricanes develop off the tail end of fronts before, but not this year. Any vorticity out here that's trying to concentrate is on the weak side and the overall intertropical convergence zone pretty far to the south. So things are nice and calm as we move forward. Uh, even Africa, not a lot happening over the continent right now. Um, what should we use? I guess we'll use this blue color. Should make everything pop okay, I guess. Uh, honestly, though, look, there's just not much in the way of deep thunderstorm activity at all. We don't see these big, sprawling tropical waves lined up because there is also sinking air, generally speaking. Or another way to look at it is the lack of rising air over Africa, too. And if we translate all this over to the GFS as one example of the many global models that are out there these days, and boy, there are lots more of them. I said this the other day, between the AI stuff and all the global models and all the ensembles, we could do this for an hour. But then that gets really, really boring. So we'll just look at the GFS for right now. And I am going to run this out to two weeks, and you're going to notice nothing much. Very little activity overall over the next 384 hours. Uh, and anything that does happen looks like it's happening in the eastern Pacific. See way over here, southeast Pacific, that's where all the action is. And not much at all happening in the Atlantic Basin. Just remarkable. And this takes us out to the 28th of September. And that would be something else if we have no hurricanes in the month of September. That would be one for the record books. We're not there yet. We'll see. All right, so other people are looking at all this as well as you could imagine. 
and um, we're wondering, we're all wondering, like, what is going on, and how was this not blatantly obvious months ago? Uh, well, hey, that's where science gets to be tricky sometimes, and it's 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 always interesting, isn't it? Anyway, activity will slowly pick up over the next week or two in the Atlantic, so says Michael Lowry, uh, starting with the disturbance tagged by the NHC this morning, and going with our theme here of no hurricanes anytime soon. For now, at least, development will be gradual with no foreseeable threats to land. And then he's got a nice substat going on there. If you want to check that out, follow Mr. Lowry here on the social media, and you're good. Uh, Twitter, I still call it Twitter. Why not, right? Whatever. So there's that. And then there's this from our friend Ben Noel. I want to put this animation into motion. Now I'm going to come back on and speak to you while we finish things up here. And I'm going to get that on a t-shirt too one day. I'm going to speak to you, not just at you. Um, I have a whole idea of t-shirts that I could do over the next many years. Maybe that's where I'll, I'll make all my money in the future since hurricanes seem to be going extinct. But are they? That leads me good uh, segue into this. So the sinking air, which is literally that substance, sinking air caps the convection. It just doesn't allow what we call forcing. And this map, and again, we love Ben Knoll for these maps. They're just fantastic. Really shows us, I mean, look, there's North America right there. Kind of outline it. I know there's more to it, but that's North America. There's Africa over here. And take the telestration away. All this reddish color is your sinking air. It's air going down at the upper levels. And so it squashes the atmosphere like a bicycle pump. It makes that air compress. It's warmer, drier, dries it out. And uh, you just don't get tropical forcing, right? And that's the way it is right now. So let's drop me back out of the frame so you can pay attention to the animation. Moving ahead towards the 20th, hey, maybe next week we start getting more rising motion uh, across the Atlantic Basin. Maybe. We'll see. And uh, we're going to have to be skeptical going forward, right? And through the end of the month, it kind of wanes again. But then, once we get into the early part of October... Possibly our one shot here at potentially significant impacts for land, including the United States, probably the Gulf Coast. And this matches up with climatology to a T. We've seen it many years here in the past. October has been busy more often than not. And it might really only come down to a few weeks of really significant activity this hurricane season versus what we were all thinking, well, most of us anyway, I don't want to categorize everybody into this group. Some people, as I said in my last video, did see warning signs that the season would not produce very much, even back in the spring. But, by and large, most of the guidance pointed towards a very active season overall, maybe even bordering on hyperactive, and it looks like that is not going to happen. That being said, prudence would certainly dictate that we keep an eye on things because you never know and I probably should just get a poster of it for behind me somewhere or a t-shirt or whatever the old adage it only takes one and I want to remind you 2022 was pretty darn dead all the way until the end of September and for our friends up in Atlantic Canada you know Nova Scotia area uh, that was Fiona that was there it only takes one pretty devastating event for them then for the lower 48, Florida in particular, Ian, those three letters, we will always remember that. And everybody remembers Ian. Ian is still very fresh on people's minds even today, coming up on three years later. So Michael, 2018, October the 10th, last year, Milton, I could go on and on and on. We're not out of the woods yet. It's looking good for the next couple of weeks or so. Let's take all the good news that we can get enjoy it but just don't walk away from it and ignore it most people are smart enough to know that right at least my audience is and for that i am very grateful i'm also grateful that you tuned in i appreciate it have a great weekend enjoy the quiet while it lasts from all of us at hurricane track i'm mark Suttoth. good to be back with you i'll see you again sometime monday